everybody welcome back to another my name toys video today we are back with a brand new video breaking down the mdt live roster yes the pick fed roster for the mdt live brand if you guys are unaware what the pick fed is or whatever man it's been a while we probably have some new followers of the channel that may not know what the pick fed is maybe you follow around with it maybe you've seen it in the past long story short we haven't done a pick fed episode in over a year i think the last one was last october we did a vindication episode then the one before that was last christmas so it's definitely we've only done two shows in a year and a half i think so been pretty bummerific to be honest with you but today man we are back with a brand new pick fed update on the roster of mdt live because i i talk to my brother about this all the time is that the figures are the best they've ever been as far as like articulation and look and how well they're made and we don't we haven't even made shows bro we haven't even made shows and it makes me sick to my stomach and i have failed you guys on a bunch of levels in my own personal opinion but i appreciate your patience i appreciate your kindness and i appreciate your attention and just all the people that love the channel and enjoy the videos man i greatly appreciate all of you but today man what i'm going to be showing you is the current way the roster looks and then showing you what figures that we have gotten over the the last you know 10 to 12 months to replace the figures that are currently on the roster if that makes sense so what you saw in the past of these guys will not be what you see in the new pick fed episodes when those drop and i'm not going to give you a date because when I give you a date, I don't want something to come up. I'm not going to set myself a deadline because it just creates a whole process there. So what I'm going to do, just start with the first guy and then just go through and we'll battle through it and I'll explain, you know, why I'm using a certain figure, why I'm not using a certain figure and all those different things. So let's shut the hell up and get into it. Starting out first, let's get John Cena out of the way for just a moment. His ankles are so bummy. Damn this figure. Let's start off first with our MDT champion, man. This is Roman Reigns, of course, MDT champion. If you were unaware, MDT Live and MDT booked Roman Reigns as this badass heel bloodline stable with the Usos in the black joggers and things like that. In the white joggers and the red joggers. I know he, he's worn that sometimes on WWE television, but the way WWE has booked him the last two to three years is how MDT live has portrayed him since early on in the pick fed, which I thought was crazy. Nonetheless, that doesn't really matter that much, but we do have the brand new MDT championship right here. I don't know if I'll use the old version or this version. Which one do you guys like more? I mean, this one's more detailed and looks better but i don't know we'll see about that however here's roman reigns currently we did give him the black shorts look i think this is a really badass like custom gear look this is how he looked at hell's gate when he defended the championship in the elimination chamber i like this get up i'm gonna keep him in this get up it might change but what i thought about doing was taking a couple ultimate romans i have a few here on the shelf i may take his red gauntlets and just replace all these gauntlets with red and he'll have red gauntlets on this figure so i still like this look i love this head sculpt this is a custom head sculpt from BEW. I still love this Roman. I'm going to keep this Roman. I just may put some red gaunt. Oh my god. You see that say? I may replace his gauntlets with red gauntlets. I think that's what I'm going to do for Roman Reigns. Not anything crazy because I still like the articulation on this figure. It feels good. It looks a hell of a lot better than the Ultimate. I'm going to ride with the regular Roman Reigns, but we could change out his gauntlet colors or something like that. So that's what we're doing for Roman Reigns. As far as Kevin Owens is concerned, the Extreme Champion, not going to change anything because we're just going to use the Elite 91. I don't... This figure was not released last time we did an episode it was the elite 80 i think ko or elite 81 ko and he didn't have double jointed arms he didn't have as good of a head sculpt it wasn't a bad figure but this one's certainly better we did fix it up a little bit he's got some cool swag going on but i'm gonna keep this figure like it is i, I like him the way it is it looks badass and for pay-per-views of course he will have a custom shirt you know how we do with the attires on the on the pay-per-view shows and stuff so we'll, we'll be doing that but moving on forward we do have the usos now these guys if you guys are aware we do have summer slam build a figure release of these guys coming soon or no we have a best of series coming of jay or jimmy i think it's jay and then it, jimmy is getting the summer slam elite i think or maybe vice versa i mean at this point mattel doesn't even know but with mdt world tag team champions here in the bloodline and what i'm thinking about doing i don't think i can wait on those elites bro i don't think i could wait on both black jogger elites so what i think i'm gonna do i'm not completely positive on it i think i may go ahead and get two of the you know they called this jimmy me, even though it's clearly Jay. I'm probably going to get a couple of these and then switch the torsos, put them in black sleeved and have black jogger Usos potentially with the red shoes and have those to match the Roman Reigns figure. I think that's what I'm going to do there, but we'll play around with that. You know, they have the black Uso hats. They have these badass jackets as well that I'll probably put on there. They also have like this gold on here. I may paint that red or something. I don't know. I'm still playing around with it. We'll see. It's just, I want black jogger Uso at least. I've been waiting on those for years and I don't really want to wait but 
but if we're going to get the pick fed going, I may just roll with these, but these have double jointed arms, so there's another, you know, little level to it. I don't know. We'll see, but that's what I got there for those guys. Still playing around with ideas, still shuffling around, but it'll be one of those two for sure. Moving on next, we do have RVD. Now, the last time we saw RVD, it was with his Elite 27 figure. I'm sure as hell not going to use this figure again. I mean, I've had this figure around since, like, MDT Live Episode 1, so, I mean, this, this figure's been through it. It still actually has some tight joints and stuff, but surely we can get him in here with an updated Elite. I don't know if I will be using the Elite 91 with the Tiger Stripes, probably one of my favorite Mattel figures ever made. I did put smaller knee pads on there, or I'll take his Ruthless Aggression Elite right here, and I'll switch the knee pads out on uh, on a surgery or something, and we'll roll with this gear. One of these two figures will be used because they do have double jointed arms. The head sculpt's the same, but, you know, maybe we'll get a new one, but we have more RVDs, and if I could track down that Chase, I may use that Chase on a show, you know, that unreleased Chase. If I could figure out a way to get that figure, maybe I'd use that in a show just to be just bonkers as hell, but I think that is what I'll do for RVD. Easy transition right there to the double jointed arms. Next up, we do have Jack Swagger here. Not Jake Hager. We have Jack Swagger. We have his wrestling version and his USA gear. We did do this fix up a long time ago, but it still holds true. If anything, I might switch the arms for like black tape double jointed arms. If I could figure out a good way to do that, you know, I've done that on certain figures, but I still like the suited body. I like this head sculpt for the guy. I'm sure as hell not going to be using one of his AEW figures. Like, first of all, this prison jumpsuit one is way too damn big. I mean, look how gigantic it is, you know. Plus, he's also in a prison outfit. And then you have the other Jake Hager figure, which is just not good. You know, it's not good. It's pretty stiff and all those different things. It's stained as hell. Solid looking head sculpt on here because I did switch it, but I'd much rather roll with this and then just try to switch the double jointed arms onto the Elite here. So, I'm not going to be switching out anything crazy on him. I think I could still roll with the current figure I have, but I'll try to figure out a way to do double jointed arms, but I'm, I'm definitely not using these. There's just no, I'm just not doing that. You can get that out of my face. Next up, we have Rated RKO. We have Randy Orton right here, which is just, this is a figure that I have adored since the beginning of MDT Live and the Pick Fed. I think I made this on like My Damn Halls episode four or something, and we put the basic head sculpt onto this best of pay-per-view elite, and then we put the elite 35 arms on it, and it has stood the test of time, but I think it's finally time to retire it. It is an iconic Randy Orton Elite here on the channel. It's held up fantastically, but I think it is that time to retire him and bring in either the Elite 91 or the brand new Elite 98 here. It just looks much better. It's double-jointed arms. It's got a little, a little bit more character in the, in the gear. Got the same hoodie on there. Nothing crazy there. Head sculpt's clearly better. I could use the Elite 91 in the white gear, but since Rated RKO are together now in the pick fed as a tag team, this, this Edge figure right here has stood the test of time as well. I don't know if I'll switch this Edge out. I really like this Edge. I might switch some double jointed ar Edge arms on there from the Elite 94. We will have to just play that by ear. I don't want them both in white gear. I feel like that's more of a pay-per-view thing, but I may just roll with a custom gear. I don't know, but I'm definitely going to update these guys. You know what I mean? I, I don't want to use the exact same figures as last time. I think it is time to update those guys, and I think that's something that we're going to try and do there. Moving right along, guys, we do have Chris Jericho here. Now, I was on the fence about this, but this one's waist is pretty loose, even though we've gotten through some matches with this guy. He doesn't have his tattoos, so I figured, I mean, we'll give the Unrivaled a chance. You know, Chris Jericho had a good outing in the Hell's Gate Elimination Chamber the last time we saw him. People, this is just a disclaimer, people say that we should do a draft and redo things and start fresh. Absolutely not. We got stories to tell. I gotta finish this chapter. There's just no way. So, we're gonna keep it rolling, but I can update these figures as we go, and uh, that'll be alright with me. So, we do have the AEW Amazon exclusive Unrivaled Jericho here, which would probably replace this one, even though it's a bit different, you know, it, it, you get the point. Up next, we do have CM Punk. Now, the last time you guys saw CM Punk, I do believe it was the Elite 16, so we do have the Elite 16 here. I may still use it, but the double jointed arms, and I know this guy's like way bigger than him and, and all those different things, but I still think that uh, the Unrivaled is an option. And then if we're doing backstage stuff, of course, we will have the, you know, the, the first dance ice cream pop CM Punk to go in there. You know, he's got the jogging pants and stuff like that. So that would be the one we use for backstage things. He's got no tape on. It's a really cool way to, you know, really submerge yourself into the atmosphere of the pick fed and things of that nature. Next up, we have Shelton Benjamin here. Now, if we're going to replace Shelton Benjamin, it's going to be with the... Ru I'm going to keep him just like this unless we get the Ruthless Aggression Elite. Once we get the Ruthless Aggression Elite with the updated formula, double jointed arms, I'm absolutely using that version. It's just the best version. That's That, that figure is going to be in my top 10 elites for sure of 2023, no doubt. 
but I'm looking forward to the Ruthless Aggression Elite Shelton that's going to replace this one. This one's tough. We have Seth Rollins here, and this is a figure I want to use on the pig fed because it's double jointed arms in the pink and black gear, which I think is so sick, and it looks so good, but these legs are tiny. Even though this figure feels fantastic in the hand, I might just run with this until a later date, but we will have to see. I, I don't know what I'm doing here. I, I just love the way this looks, though. Might replace the head sky. You know, we'll see. We'll definitely see, but I like the way the double jointed arms look on this figure here, especially with the pink, and I use Bret Hart wrist tape, so this is no paint, ch you know, chipping or anything. Looks very clean. He just kind of has tiny legs, but I still, I don't know, man. I love the way this figure feels in hand, so we will see about that one. No Way Jose, we really don't have an option. We're keeping No Way Jose the way he is. Dean Ambrose, I've had people ask if I'm going to use the John Moxley AEW Unrivaled. I have heard terrible things about using this figure to fed with and pose him around. Like, over time, he gets in incredibly loose, but I am going to have to tell you guys, I'm using the Dean Ambrose. I'm using Dean Ambrose, and the reason is because he's still Dean Ambrose. He's not John Moxley in the pick fed. He is still Dean Ambrose, so I will be rolling with an Elite Ambrose. If I do anything, it will be switching the arms for double jointed arms. That is it. I might change his gear up. You know, I might pop a different head sculpt on there, do something, but he's not Mox. He's Dean Ambrose, so we'll roll with that one. Plus, I don't want to deal with the frustrations of the looseness of the John Moxley at this juncture. Next up, we have Zack Ryder. Not gonna change anything here. He's not Matt Cardona, he's Zack Ryder in the pick fed, so we're just gonna roll with how he is. Jurassic Express, not really any options here. The only thing I'm gonna do is switch out his knee pads for smaller open knee pads, and that is it. Betting with these guys is going to be a nightmare, and I do not look forward to it, to be honest with you. However, we're just gonna have to build a bridge and get over it, so that's, that's what we're left with there. Next up is Brock Lesnar. If you guys know or remember the last episode of MDT Live, which was on our last year's Christmas episode. Christmas wasn't that long ago, so that's why I think picking up now would be the best time, because it will be as if this happened just this past, you know, last couple weeks, if that makes sense. But Brock Lesnar did show up dressed up as Santa Claus. He attacked Kevin Owens, and I have to replace this figure with the new Ultimate Brock. This Ultimate Brock was my number one Ultimate of the year. I love this figure to death. My only struggle is, should I put the short hair sculpt on here, or should I just say F it and roll with the man bun and the beard? and it'd be like, you know, it's not that big of a deal to have the continuation. You guys can let me know down below. Should I pop the short hair head sculpts on here until it gets later in time as it grows out over time? Or should I just pop this head on there and just roll with the punches? You guys can let me know. But I'm definitely using this figure as the base because it just is immaculate in hand. It feels so incredible. And I thought this figure was just unbelievably great. This one is a step above and even better. So I'm definitely using this one. This is potentially my favorite ultimate ever. It is so good. And I used to think that about this figure until this figure came out and now I'm just mind blown. Next up, we have Buddy Murphy. Not changing anything here unless I put double jointed arms on him. Only thing that I would change. Kurt Angle, same thing. I would only put double jointed arms on him. I don't think, you know, unless we get an ultimate of this guy or something in the near future which doesn't seem right. I like this. It's kind of a mix of old and new Kurt Angle. I'm very excited for, for this figure. I love the way it looks. It looks absolutely sick as hell. It's like a mix of modern and old Kurt Angle. I love it. Uh, this is one of my favorite little fix-ups ever. Ever. Cedric Alexander, same thing. Not really anything I can do. I could put double jointed arms on him from Kofi, the Elite 96, but I'd need the tattoos and there's some different stuff you'd have to do. So right now he's just going to roll like he is. Maybe we'll get an updated Elite of him someday, but yeah, he's kind of just the same. John Morrison, I don't think he looked like this last time, but I put the Elite 82 head on the Survivor Series Elite and then I put the Elite 4 jacket on there. So I feel like that's a pretty cool fix up. And I don't know, he may get some double jointed arm treatment. We'll have to see about that if I can figure out a formula, but Sometimes those conversions is not as easy as it looks, man. Sometimes they get like they don't go on right, and then you F up a figure's arms, and then you're kind of F. We have Apollo Crews here. I did put a basic head sculpt on here because I thought it would look better, but I think at the end of the day, his last elite is the way to go. And I'll probably get the chase figure. I think the chase would do it wonders as well, like in the white gear, but I do like the blue, and the blue, silver, and black does look good. So I'd probably use this figure over it. But this figure's still pretty underrated. But this Apollo right here is the best one they've made outside of the all-white chase, of course. Right back, I mean, is he ever going to appear on MDT Live Television? I don't think so, Brad. I, I you know, it, it'll, it'll be a cold day in hell probably before that happens. Next up is Christian. I don't think I want to use his unrivaled figure. I feel like it's too big. It's a weird formula. I think I'm going to roll with the Elite, even though, again, easy. Just make the arms double jointed and probably we'll probably just roll with it. Next up is the Elite 71 Jeff Hardy. Great figure. Love the way this looks, but if I roll with Jeff Hardy on MDT Live, I'm going to go with the top talents simply for the 
double jointed arms. You can't really beat it, you know, getting the double jointed arms, solid face paint. I could easily just switch the head sculpt with something else if I wanted to, but this is good for a base Jeff Hardy. Maybe use the ultimate, get some different things playing around with, you know, but uh, at the end of the day, it, it wouldn't bother me that much to use this figure, but I, I, I gotta have the double jointed arms. I think it helps a lot. Next up, we do have Neville slash Pac. I call him Neville on the pick fed. I sure as hell am not gonna use this figure right here. <laughs> Seriously, though, this one is much better. The Elite 55 Neville uh, beats the Unrivaled right here. It doesn't even have legs, leg swivel. Even though, like, it has double jointed arms, it could, like, ab crunch decent. I did put the Elite 55 head sculpt on here. This is a custom head sculpt that I made forever ago. OGs oh, remember when the beard fell off. That was so long ago, but damn, what a great memory. And, uh, yeah, I'm definitely using the Elite 55 over the Unrivaled figure. We have MVP right here. This one's going to be simple, kind of a flex between two different MVPs. I'm going to be using the double jointed arm version, you know. It's, it's an updated look. I might do some things with like some gloves or play around with some stuff. I might try and put these arms over on this figure because this figure's shoulders get loose. But if I can figure out a way to put these arms over here, maybe switch the heads, maybe kind of make like a hybrid between the two, I might do that. Maybe put a solid black sleeve here. I don't know. We'll, we'll play around with that maybe on surgery. Maybe we'll do like a pick fed themed episode where we fix up all our figures and prepare them for the show. We'll see about that. Eric Bischoff back here. He is going to be the same until we get the Ruthless Aggression Elite. Gonna be the exact same. Don't see really a reason to change him. He's, I mean, he's rode since day one-ish and uh, I, I like the way he looks. Bobby Lashley, I think we used his last Elite, the Elite uh, whatever Elite that was. It may have even been this figure. Maybe it wasn't. I don't remember. No, what figure did we use? I don't even remember, bro. Maybe it was the Elite 60. Oh yeah, I think we used the Elite 69 Lashley last time, but he got beat by KO in an Extreme Championship match in that like Miracle on 34th Street fight or whatever the hell that was where they fought with candy canes and they threw snowballs at each other and then Brock Lesnar attacked KO after the match. This one is one that uh, is beastly. It, it's beastly. I'll probably use the other one in the black and white gear, but this is a perfect Bobby Lashley. I don't see a reason to switch him out. And I think this is the last one. We have John Cena here, and I think the only thing I want to do is when the Elite 100 gets here, I do want to put the Word Life bicep band on here, but I think I'm going to use the ultimate. You know, just mix and match some armbands and stuff. I'll probably create his own custom gear. Uh, you know, much like the man Ramirez jersey here, my favorite baseball player of all time. I just threw that on there because it really makes it. Uh, you know, I kind of mixed the, the Doctor of Thurgonomics gear and gimmick with the chain gang gimmick. You know, he's got the chain gang chain with the word life armbands and that's kind of what we've been going for. We kind of like mix the two together, but I'll probably do the same thing. We'll kind of mix and match these, but this figure allows for much better articulation. I like the way the shoes feel and the way the figure feels in hand. It is a whole lot better than the uh, Defining Moments Elite over here, but John Cena will get some sort of treatment for sure. I'll mix and match some stuff. I make custom paint up his shoes. I don't know. We'll, we'll play around with that for sure, but that is every single figure and update to the roster. Lots of figures we've gotten, lots of things that we can play around with and change up. Dropping shish everywhere. It's pissing me off, but that is it, man. I think uh, I think we got some good updates in here. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted to make a video detailing those fix-ups, de detailing the updates of the figures, and just kind of breaking everything down, but that is pretty much going to wrap up this video, man. If you guys missed our room tour, we posted it late last night, so I do apologize for that but if you guys would like to check that out i greatly appreciate it go check it out it details the full room mdt room tour we detail all the shelves all the figures go through the drawers it's like 45 minutes long so if you want to just you know buckle the hell up put it on in the background or you know get a check out of the mdt room and what it's like in here definitely go check that out leave a like leave a comment on the video i greatly appreciate it man but that is going to wrap up today's video thank you guys so very much for watching hope you guys did enjoy leave me your thoughts down in the comment section below but i'm getting out of here man subscribe to the channel follow me on instagram twitter Twitter and TikTok at MyDamnToys. I will see you guys in the next video. Have a blessed one, and I'll see you next time. We'll never be